Good day. Welcome to another lesson. Today we discussing a skills plan development or skills development plan, depending on how you want to call it. And the course is about developing the necessary skills for you to be able to deliver on your mandate or on your strategic objective. So skills it plays a very, very important part or very important, it's a very important component of a business. And the challenge is that most SMMEs, they don't develop the necessary skills so that they can challenge the existing players in the market. So as a super deal maker, we've identified this, this is one of the challenges or one of the problems that uh, SMMEs experience. And remember, lack of skills, it can contribute towards your business failing. Hence, we have, we have decided that this is one of the courses that we're going to put on Super Deal Maker to make sure that we guide uh, entrepreneurs on how to develop skills. It doesn't matter how small the, the business is, you still have to have your skills plan. And skills plan, remember in South Africa, the education is not free, but it's substantially free. So as an SMME, if you have a skills plan, you will be able to attract a grant funding from uh, your institutions like your CEDA and other uh, enterprise development agencies. So if you have a skills plan, Meaning, you know what your organization is lacking. You know your weaknesses and you have identified the skills that you need to acquire for you to be more competitive in the market. Then once you have the skills plan, you can take that skills plan and submit it to your, your CETA. Apply for a discretionary funding where they will give you funding maybe for skills program or for full qualification maybe you can get uh, learners or interns to come in in your business where you don't pay them they are paid by uh, your your sitter or the learnership that you might they might have enrolled for so skills uh, planning and skills development they become very 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 important one for you to know the skills that you need as a business to be able to be competitive in the market. That's one. And which is on its own is very important. The second part is uh, you can access funding where your skills development are funded and which can include getting someone on a learnership or apprenticeship or whatever the, the program that are out there. You can get an individual who won, you'll be training them about the industry, but there will be an extra hand that they're going to be able to help you. Most especially if you're a small business, you might not have the funding to hire a, a person on a full-time basis. But if a person comes in on a learnership where you don't pay anything, this person is learning. And normally they take uh, quality graduates who have uh, qualifications in the space that you might be in or the sector that you're operating in and they come on board and they will assist you one maybe with administration and certain strategic uh, objectives and goals that you you want to achieve skills development plan is very very important not only as i said not only for you as an entrepreneur but for your team so that you know for you to be successful in this space uh, which skills do you need or the business needs okay and then once you identify those skills then you develop a skills plan we're going to go through it in terms of how you develop skills a uh, skills plan but you develop a skill a skills plan and then from that skills plan then you put it into a strategic objective so that you will know even if you are engaging your uh, enterprise development institution or you are engaging your your CETAS, uh, sector specific training organizations, then you'll be able to show them that this is my skills plan. I need one, two, three, four skills. Are you willing to fund it or will you be able to fund those skills? So you can get funding from your CETAS to bring in someone in to help you with your business or your business 
people that are employed, they can get uh, grants. And then I know there's a joke to say, but you train people and people leave. And the question is, what if you don't train them and they stay? So you might have people who are not trained within the business and those who will derail the, the pro your progress as an entrepreneur or as an SMME. Remember, SMME, you need or you must make sure that you get all the help that you can get. But it's not like the help is not there. But if you don't know how to access it, then it becomes a challenge. So we're going to go through it in terms of uh, the skills, how you identify the skills, how do you go about maybe trying to access funding from your CETAs, and how do you implement your, your learnerships. So that's, uh, in a nutshell, the skills development plan, our course on skills development plan, which forms part of our Super Dealmaker program where we teach entrepreneurs a holistic view on the business and how to run different components of, of your business. You know already we've done your finance for non-financial managers, which teaches you about finances. We've, we've looked at uh, project management, which teaches you how you execute projects. It's not only for big projects, but within the organization, how you execute project. Uh, we, we have done access to funding, which tells you how you can access funds, access to markets. It tells you how you can access markets or to the strategies and uh, methodologies, that, methodologies that you can use for you to access markets. Uh, we have looked at management and controls, how you put uh, controls in place and how do you manage your organization because you need systems so you remember when we did the management and control controls i continuously mentions that mentioned that you need to have systems in place so that you know that even if you are not there the business can still run because you have um controls in place you have management tools you have policies in place so that's management and control and we also looked at a supply chain in terms of you understanding how you do your buying, your, your demands, how do you manage that supply chain process? Because a supply chain is very critical for business or most especially SMEs. You need to understand your supply chain and then so that you, you know when to buy, what to buy, where to buy, what to buy. So that you don't just buy things and they get rotten or they buy things. There's no demand for those products. So that was when the supply chain uh, program. And now we are, we are looking at a skills development plan. And then after the skills development plan, we're going to look at uh, how you manage your stakeholders, which is, we call it stakeholders management. So now we're going to detail on your skills development plan. What is a skills development plan? Skills development plan is a plan that an organization develops so that they can acquire the skills. So you do what they call a skills audit. Meaning, you look at, one, you look at your sector, two, you look at your, your organization, and then you look at the skills that are required by your sector, the sector that you are operating within. And then you look at the skills that you have within the organization. So if you are a one-man show, obviously you look at yourself in terms of the skills that you have, and you look at the skills that are required for you to be competitive in the market and then what you do is you you match the skills that you have with the ones that you have so the, res the residual skills the skills that are not matched are the skills that you need to put in your skills development plan it's that simple and then on super team maker we have developed a skills development uh, tool where you can simply put in depending on your uh, sector and your current skills. You put the, the sector skills, you put your skills, and then it will generate uh, the skills that are, are missing or the skills that you, you are lacking on. And then from there, then you're gonna have the skills development plan. And from the platform, we'll be able to look at the opportunities for those skills. And if we find those skills, then we'll be able to refer you or get in contact with you to indicate that you there is an opportunity for you to attend a certain skills program provided that you have identified it 
and it's recorded in our super deal maker app but this skills development plan is not only for you to uh, complete it for super deal maker but it is for your business because you need to know the skills that are required in your sector and do an honest analysis of the skills that you have and the skills that are required and identify those gaps and then at super deal maker will be able to help you to access uh, the specific skills that you're looking for and once you've done that then you're going to have the skills plan and that skills plan you not only be using it for super deal maker but you can use that skills plan to submit to your sitters because each uh, industry is, it belongs to a certain sitter or oh, but i know now uh, they're moving everything to qcto but still they'll have different departments let's say you are in fast food then you you currently you're supposed to be on Cathita. if you are uh, on selling food or producing food and beverages then there's a food bev if you are in training like us providing services the services sita if you're in computers there's mict sita so those are the different sitas meaning those are the government institutions that are looking for skills in different sectors depending on which sector you're operating you just have to con con uh, contact uh, the relevant uh, sitter so once you did you, you, you've done your skills audit and skills plan then you can approach the sitters when they have the window open they call it a uh, discretionary grants meaning you need to identify the skills that you need you apply to say i need one two three four skills so it might be you might be needing a full qualification or uh, requiring a short course we call it skills program they, or they call it skills program so you might be requiring maybe short course to um, sharpen up certain skills it might be finance or maybe uh, management or administration depending on your weaknesses and once you develop that skills plan then when that window of discretionary funding opens you you gonna you will be having a skills plan that you can submit to to whichever sitter that you you belong to or uh, the the sitter for your sector and once you submit if it gets approved then the budget is allocated and depending on the type of training that you need then they can they will give you a service provider that will facilitate that skill that you you might be looking for or the one that you are lacking so that's how your the, the skills plan works so but the important thing is for you to identify the skills needs for your business what which skills or what type of trade is, is required for you to be successful in the sector that you're operating in so once you have identified those skills as i said you identify the skills that are required you identify the skills that you have if you are one man show it will be your own skills but if you are a team you do the audit you audit the whole team to see the skills that you have and the skills that are required for you to be competitive and there will be the the difference in terms of the residual skills that you don't have the competency internally and those are the skills that you apply for discretionary funding or you approach institutions like your your CEDA for training and other private institutions like large corporates they have enterprise development uh, schemes that they can train you on the skills that you you are lacking depending on the sector maybe it might be requiring uh, sabs i know CEDA uh, regularly and organize such trainings you might be requiring maybe food safety and all that so if you approach different institutions for to say i'm looking for these skills then when the opportunity comes they will be able to train you on, on the skills that you are you are missing so if you don't do your skills plan they wouldn't know what entrepreneurs are looking for and even if they know the entrepreneur but they wouldn't know about you that you lack the skills so that's why most of the time smes especially in underdeveloped area they are struggling to access skills grants that are available remember sitters are not okay most of the time they're not spending all the money that they have because they can't find uh, smes to trade or not only smes but host employers meaning host employer it's a it's an smme 
that is willing to host a learner. So, because you haven't done your skills plan, the industry doesn't know that you are looking, you are willing to host a learner. Meaning, you are willing to take in a learner which is paid or trained by service provider that is contracted to CETA. You don't pay that learner. That learner comes and then all you have to do, your responsibility is to give them the practical experience. But remember, oh yes, you'll be contributing to, towards uh, skills development for our country, which is a good cause. But I know that you are an entrepreneur and then you are not in business to, uh, for charity. Maybe if you are running charity, then that's great. But most ent entrepreneurs that we're talking to are the ones that are in business to, to make money. So while you'll be making, maybe contributing to the, to the country in terms of skills development and giving uh, young people an opportunity to get a uh, working experience, in return, remember you're not paying them, in return, you are getting extra hands in your business. You are getting educated trainees in your business. For sure, they will make a contribution. They will be able to assist you improve your business. They will be able to assist you do things that you wouldn't have been able to do without those extra hands. So it's a, what they call a win-win situation. It's a win for the country because uh, young people are getting what experience it's a win for uh, the SMME sector you are getting um how do you call it you are getting employees for free call it for free and then you while you 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 contributing back by by training them now most SMMEs don't have access to this and it's not a necessarily a rocket sci rocket science maybe it's just issue of access to to information that's why we developed this, this, this training program to make SMMEs aware that there is an opportunity in the skill space. And this will make them not only that, but it will make you competitive because the more you bring uh, learners into your business with different views, with different energies, that will automatically improve your, your business. Okay, not automatically, but eventually it will improve your business. So sometimes we get bad students or learners sometimes will get the good ones and some you might probably keep because it's like you you'll be because the learnerships they run for about 12 months so you will be having someone in there you'll be able to see their personalities and all that at the end of the learnership you might decide to keep them if they they you see that they're bringing added value so that's on the identification now on when you're conducting your skills Needs. You need to be, understand your sector. You need to understand what are your competitors doing? What skills do they have? And then you look at, you read the market. You need to understand the industry that you are operating within to say, in this industry, where is the industry going? Which skills will be required? And you document those skills and you work towards obtaining those skills. But once you have done that, and as I said, that you have enterprise development institution that can help you. You have the sitters that can help you. Not only that, even for, for yourself, you might make a plan because there's a lot of um, online courses out there on specific skills. So once you know which skills are missing, you go into Google, you look at uh, uh, different online courses. Most of them are, are free. They will be free. You have free access to to material, free access to uh, the lectures, but you wouldn't have access to assessments. But if you are running a business, I don't, th I don't think you're concerned about having the certificate necessarily. Certificate is for those who are looking for jobs. You are looking to acquire the skill. Even if you don't get the certificate, you don't uh, uh, register for the paid courses, you only do the free ones. You are su you're supposed to be looking for technical skills or even the soft skills but you are looking for the skills not the certificate so that those skills are the ones that will be able to help you propel your business forward so skills development is a very very critical uh, component of your business and I know from the experience many entrepreneurs are ignoring skills development it's not part of their, their agenda it happens if it happens, people learn on the job, but it's not a systematized 
program or plan that they put in place to make sure that they implement that. So doing skills audit and developing skills plan is very, very important. Yeah, sometimes you need a, a specialist, a skills development facilitator to help you design your skills plan. But with the Super Deal Maker, uh, we, we develop the skills plan according to most CITAS. If you submit the skills plan that you generated from Super Deal Maker, it, it will surely be 99% compliant. There might be one, two issues, extra documentation or extra information that the CITA might want. But the Super Deal Maker skills plan is it's on point. So you can use that. Or alternatively, since you, now you have the information, you can approach a skills development facilitator. We have them on, on our platform. Then they can help you uh, analyze, do the skills audit and develop a skills plan for your business. And then once the skills plan is, is, is developed, then you know which courses must you, you must target, which programs, and you might be able to approach government institution to help if you don't have the funding for it. You might be able to approach CETA to help so by doing that, by doing this exercise of identifying the skills that you lack, it's not only going to help you achieve your thing, but it might also help you fund the employees that you're bringing in, in, the, in the business, if you bring them on learnerships based on your skills program. So let's say now currently maybe minimum wage is 3.5. If you had to hire someone, you have to pay them 3.5. Per, per month and then but if you put them on a learnership then it becomes different the sitter will be able to pay for for the learnership and while you're getting the the benefit from the knowledge that uh, that learner will be bringing so that's the first step identify your skills plan or your skills needs or the needs of the of the business once you have identified the needs you identify the skills that you internally have. And then you match, you match the two. The, the ones that are not matched, that means those are your skills gap. They're called skills gap. Then once you have the skills gap, then you develop a plan in terms of how you're going to close that gap. Then once you have that plan, that plan is what you're using when you're approaching enterprise development institution, when you're approaching your, your government department to say, I need assistance on these skills. And as I said earlier, and I keep on repeating that, even though our edu education is not free, but we have a lot of grants for, for training, for learnerships, for internships. There is money out there because uh, the country is in crisis because uh, there are no jobs and there are no funding. For, to start your businesses and all that. So most of the graduates, they don't find jobs. So if you are out there with your skills plan, you might be able to give an opportunity to those learners, to those, to the youth, to the people with disability, those looking for practical work experience because they can't get employed because after graduating, they need, if they're looking for a well-paying job, they will need to ask them where they have, do you have experience. If, then if they don't exp have experience, then they are on a disadvantage. But if you have a skills plan, you'll be able to take them on board and you will be able to provide them with that uh, work experience. But in the process, as I'm consistently saying, they will be helping you to grow your business as well. So I to attach on the uh, process that you follow to identify your skills gap, right? And then remember, this is guided by your sector and your business plan on where you want to, to be. So once you see the, the skills plan, once you see the, the sec, your sector in terms of the skills that is required, you have done your personal skills audit within the organization for, in, for those individuals within the business. And then you look at your business plan to say, what do you want to achieve? So now you look at what's required by sector, what is required by your business plan. But remember, you have your vision, missions, and objectives in your business plan. You look at that, and you look at the skills that you have internally. Now, your business plan is the guiding tool. You know the, what the sector is looking for. You know what 
skills do you have? Because as we discussed previously, you've done the skills audit. Now, once you have the gap, you look at uh, the business plan to say, yes, I have these skills, the sector requires these skills, but what skills are required by my business plan? So then you identify, maybe the business plan requires marketing skills, uh, maybe, I don't know, uh, compliance or SABS and all those things. So now you target primarily the skills that are, la are lacking or you don't have to, for you to meet your strategic objectives. You focus on those. Then you develop, as I said, a plan and then the funding is not, you can self-fund it, as I said, or you can approach enterprise development institution, or you can approach your, your CITAS, as, as I've mentioned. Then, once you've identified that, obviously, when you are implementing those skills plan, you need to have the controls in place and the measurement in place to see if you are making progress, if you are achieving certain skills. It must not be only because you attended a course or you got a certificate. The measurement or the performance measurement must be based on the business plan. You look at the business plan. Are you achieving things that you, uh, you, you plan to achieve? More especially the ones that require the skill that you are trying to develop. That's now you'll have a performance measuring system to see if the skills that you have acquired, are they giving you the result that you're looking for? Remember now, you're an entrepreneur, you're not, not in a corporate way, just do courses for the sake of co doing courses or for the sake of getting promotion. You must do courses because you want to achieve certain objectives. And the only measure if the, the skills that you're trying to acquire are of value, you need to see them in the results. The achievement of the, the business plan is your key measuring tool, which you're supposed to use as an entrepreneur. Unlike if you're working for a corporate, you just you, you, your skills are measured by number of certificates that you have. But in the business, as an SMME, your skills are measured by the goals that you achieve from your business plan. That's how you are measured, if you are competent or not. You might be competent on, pick, on paper, which is how now the, our, our education system is designed. So people are competent on paper, but give them the practical experience or practical situation. They can't uh, uh, deliver on that. That's why you, you find that you have, I don't know how many people like, who have done MBAs. I have my MBA. You know like the intake is high for, for MBA, but they're not doing MBAs to, to master the management of the business. Because remember MBA is, is master of business management. So business administration, I mean. So you won't be able to show how you can administrate the business if you're in a corporate because you already have systems in place. But in a small business, you will be able to see if the course that you have done is of any value, is it bringing the fruits, the results? If it's not bringing the results, it doesn't matter how many certificates you have. They shouldn't matter. What matters is, are you achieving the goals on your business plan? Also, you must remember that uh, skills development is a project on its own. So you must treat it likewise. You must be able to manage that project. It should be a project with the goals that you want to achieve from it. You must implement the proper um, project management skills. We have, we have done project management. If you haven't uh, gone through that lesson, watch the video and read the material from the website on, on project management is there. So even the skills program on its own, the skills development program, it becomes a project within the organization. So what happens is in large organizations, right, where the payroll is above 500,000 per annum, you need to have a training committee. But with SMMEs, you don't expect to, to have a train, call it a training committee. A training committee is a, it's a committee where they appoint, where the skills development facilitators and uh, management meet to develop the skills plan of the organization. 
So you wouldn't have that if you are an SMB and then if you have employees less than earning uh, your, your payroll is le less than 500 and I think if you have employees less than 50 as well but okay that is a subject for correction in terms of the number of employees I will, I will double check on that but what, what you need to do what the, the skills uh, uh, committee does or training committee it, it's a committee it runs on a program call it or a project they appoint the person who's going to lead, who's going to chair the committee. They appoint the team members. They, they set milestones, the targets. They set a plan of action. So they will have a skills plan in terms of how they're going to execute it. So it will be a project in bigger organization. But as an SMME, you might be alone. You, it might be the two of you. But when you're doing it, do it as a project as well. Make sure that you plan, you identify people that are... Are required you know what activities need to be executed you are monitoring the activities you identify the risks and you make sure that the every year your annual skills plan is closed and any learnings from it if certain things are not achieved then they get carried to the next year so you must treat your skills development um, initiative as a project and as I said, that is important because we have project management, but we don't, we, know, we don't have it in isolation. Each and every activity that's happening within the organization, each strategic objective, you must treat it as a project. It must have a planning, it must have a team, you must do risk analysis, you must have outputs that you expect, you must measure those outputs, you must monitor the, the, the implementation of that project and make sure that you close their project each year. So your skills plan is not skills plan for five years. Yes, you can have a long-term skills plan, but you must break it down into your annual goals, where you, you know in the first year, I want to achieve uh, this. In the next year, I want to achieve this. In the other year, I want to achieve this. So you need to make sure that your skills plan, you manage it as a project to make sure that it's properly implemented. Now, we're going into the supply chain of the skills program or skills, skills development plan. You need to know, understand your supply chain. Remember supply chain, uh, you're dealing with the demand. You're looking at the demand of your sector. You're looking at the demand from yourself and the demand from your business plan. What skills are required? That's what, what skills are demanded for you to be successful. That's the first component when you're looking at it from the supply chain perspective. What skills are demanded by your business plan, by the industry, by you to be able to manage this business efficiently? Once you identify that, then you need to procure or acquire the skills. Who are you going to acquire the skills from? I said earlier that you can approach the CETAs. After you've done your skills plan, you can approach the CETA for funding. You can approach the enterprise development institution for them to assist you with the funding. You can, uh, you can bootstrap it yourself. You can fund it from the business coffers or your personal coffers if you don't generate much revenue yet. So you need to understand how you're going to acquire the, the skills. And then in terms of the skills, how are you going to attend the training? Remember, uh, uh, the skills plan or training takes time, takes you away from the business, right? So you need to have uh, call it a timetable or the structure in terms of when you're going to attend, when are you not going to attend, who's going to attend training when. Because you can't all go to training, who's going to stay behind if you're not a one-man show behind to execute on the uh, daily activities of the business. Even if it's you, you can't always be on training. The business needs to be uh, it needs to run. So you need to know how you're going to perform, how you're going to execute your, your training plan. That's, that's, that's very important. And then how are you going to close that? Because sometimes I've seen many SMEs, you find that they attend trainings. Uh, one, they don't do the assessments if the assessments are required. Two, the training projects are not closed properly because you need to make sure that you, if you registered for a skills program, make sure that you complete the skills program and you close it. That's, that's now that you look at the supply chain. Once you, once you close this one, then you, you start another one. Because remember, there's a, 
even if I uh, and remember I said that you can access the the grants from your your CETAs and different institutions, but those institutions uh, they have condition. I know that from uh, the CETAs, if you do a learnership and you don't complete it, you are not allowed to do another learnership until you complete the first one. So it's important to understand the supply chain and make sure that we will end up closing the, the project that you're doing in terms of skills development plan. So the whole thing, if you start a learnership, make sure you are closing the learnership. You need to be competent at the end of the day. But as I said that for, for SMEs, it's not about uh, certificates. It's about achieving the objectives of your business plan so the best way yes you need to formally close it so that you can access uh, further support or you can access uh, other learnerships or other skills program because if you don't close them even the sitters they can't give you uh, access to further funding in terms of access to to the grants because you do skills programs or you do the skills plan but you don't complete it or you don't fully execute it so you need to make sure that you fully execute your skills plan and each and every year you need to develop a new skills plan with milestone and when they will be closed so but you need to understand how the whole process work the, i'm saying the supply chain you need to know that one the demand your sector your business plan that are the ones that will guide you in terms of the skills that are required. Two, you need to know how you're going to acquire those skills in terms of the timing. You can't be a training uh, forever or every day. The business still needs to run or not all employees can go. So you need to know the logistics around the delivery or the execution or the attendance of the, the training programs. And uh, the other one that you need to understand is the key players. Remember, with training, as I said, you might have a training a training committee but if you don't have such committee you you will be the training committee yourself so you need to make sure that you you understand what you're doing you keep the records you keep everything that you're doing regarding the implementation of the skills plan and in the skills plan there are three key players maybe four the first key player is a facilitator a facilitator is the person or the institution that's facilitating that program or the training or the skills plan depending you might hire a training institution like rmk rmk will do skills facilitation and you don't necessarily pay us if it's a skills program approved by CETA, then the CETA will pay for us to facilitate that program so that's the facilitator one two after facilitation obviously the but that's the facilitator but the most important one is the learner who is the learner? How is the learner in terms of financially? Will they be able to complete the program and all that? Because they say the CETA programs are about the learner. Making sure that, even if that, that learner is you, but it's to make sure that at the end of the program, one, you've learned the practical application of what the course, the course that you, have, you had taken. Two, you get the certificate that you're supposed to get. And Today, the program is closed and you can use that certificate to enhance your career or your business or whatever the objectives that you had when you, you, you took on the course. So it's a learner, it's a facilitator. Once the facilitator has facilitated the skills program or the qualification or whatever, then there is, the assessor comes to assess if the learner is competent or not. Then after the, the assessor assessed, you might find you competent or not yet competent. If you are not yet competent, obviously the learner can still appeal and there, there are processes that you can follow to do the appeals and all that. So you get assessed and then once you are competent, then the results get moderated. Meaning the moderator will check if the learner did what they're supposed to do. They were assessed according to the standards of that qualification of that unit standard or that skills program. And were they consistent? Did the learner provide sufficient evidence and all that? And was the assessor fair on assessment? That's called moderation. So that's now the fourth person. Because we, we have the learner, we have the facilitator, we have the you as an institution, because 
they are calling you a host employer because you are employing a learner to give them practical experience so you play a critical role because you need to give them a safe environment for them to be able to learn it must be conducive and all that so the third is the institution your institution that you you will be giving the learner the practical experience four then is the assessor as i said that he assesses and then five you have the moderator the moderator will the one that is moderating and once it's all that done then the the result are submitted to if it's a it's an accredited course then the results are submitted to the CETA. the CETA verifies the result and they issue the the certificate or now in this case it will be the result will be sent to kcto that's now the mechanics on how the the skills program is delivered so then after that then you you'll take if this identify skills gap has been has been filled or if the gap has been closed if not filled closed okay you can feel it i guess but is the, is the gap closed and then the different gaps and then if there are still certain gaps then you you move them to the next skills program or if this skills program is properly closed and you achieved the things that you wanted to achieve then you move to to the next skills program for the following year as i said your skills program must be rolling each year you must have a, a skills program for that year and make sure that you achieve that until you get but okay obviously you won't get to a point where you are no longer implementing programs but you might start implementing the nice to have programs after you have implemented the programs that are critical towards your achieving your business goals so that's the, the skills program in a nutshell that's how you look at it first you look at the industry what skills are required in your industry you look at yourself what skills but you must do honest analysis what skills do you have and three you look at your business plan what does the business plan require in terms of you achieving the the targets what skills must you have if you don't have those skills then those skills you put them in your plan your skills plan and you start executing on those skills plan one i told you to get the funding you can approach the seaters you can approach different funding institution enterprise development or you can fund it yourself but lucky enough we've developed the platform on super deal maker that it makes it easier for you to develop your skills plan and will assist you in terms of finding the necessary uh, sponsors or investors when it comes to skills development and once you get the funding then you execute your your skills plan and as i said I, i've mentioned the people that are the parties that will have in there is the learner you need to give them a workplace you need to make sure that you have facilitator assessor moderator and ultimately you need to make sure that the results are moderated by the CETA if it's a, an accredited program and that is that that's the the skills plan and that's how you implement your your skills plan and most importantly you need to make sure that you manage it accordingly you have controls in place you have systems in place on how it needs to be uh, implemented the skills plan and to i repeat that you must run it like you are running a project it must be a project that you're running so that it has its closure and as i mentioned from the beginning to say that skills development is critical for your business one is to, to make you competitive two it can give you the necessary skills without you spending much money and three it will make you be able to continuously improve as a business so it is important it's not something that you, you you ignore make sure that you have your skills plan if you don't know how you can log in into super deal maker and do your business plan from your business plan you put in your your profile or your team's profile and then from that profile super deal maker will generate the the skills plan for you and you will be able to implement that skills plan and believe me once you have the necessary skills you are on your way to to success remember more than 70 percent of the business fail and one of the main contributing factor is the lack of skills so make sure that you don't ignore that yes it's a soft issue it's not like it's the technical issue it's a soft issue but make sure that you take care of it 
because it's very very important it's the one that's going to make a difference between your success or failure and then uh, skills plan and skills planning and skill development uh, goes together with uh, employee conduct and uh, workplace expected uh, compliance with regulations and all that so you need to make sure that you have a code of conduct for for your for your employees or for the business even if you don't have employees yet but make sure that you develop a code of conduct so that you train your employees on that code of conduct so that you know what is expected and the employees know what is expected of them and then have a proper disciplinary procedures that are compliant with our our labor law and make sure that you have a skills plan that is in compliance with our our labor law it's one of those things that you need to make sure that you you have in place so that it's a, you have a conducive environment for one to develop to attract talent to keep talent to be able to develop talent and remember employees are key it's one of those most important assets of of the business so you must create an environment where they operate within a system yes you can train them as much as you can you can develop their skills as much as you can but if you don't have the code of conduct if you don't have the disciplinary procedures then it, those things might be done in vain because uh, they might not behave the way they're supposed to or you might not behave the way you're supposed to or treat them the way you're supposed to treat them so having a proper code of conduct disciplinary uh, procedures and remember you need to comply with the basic condition of employment and you must put that chart there on the on the wall because it's required by law in your offices there must always be that chart but you must not just put the chart there you must comply with the with the chart and then there's also a employment equity act you must make sure that you comply with the act there's a b act you don't have to comply with the b act but as a good citizen, as a good corporate, you need to make sure that you comply with the B Act. And then we have the Skills Development Act or legislation. Remember, you need to, you need a, to register for, for skills development um, levies if your, your payroll is above 500,000. You need to contribute every year to the services seat and development of that. But remember, if, even when you register with the Skills Development uh, for skills development levies, there is discretionary grant and there is mandatory. So if you run the trainings, then you claim that money back from, from SARS or from skills development levy through SARS. So you pay it, but once you run the trainings, then you can claim it back because they design it in that way so that it forces employers to do the trainings so that they develop uh, the skills because remember if no one is forcing you to do the skills development the businesses might not train employees so if your payroll is above 500,000 you are obligated to to register for skills development plan skills, skills development levy and then you, you pay that one percent to that skills development levy but there is a, a portion that you might claim back for the trainings that you co you conducted and you can apply for discretionary grants so the government takes that skills development levy and it gives it back to the sector to do the necessary trainings so if you don't do your skills plan and submit your skills plan you might end up paying the skills development levy but not benefiting from it Yes, and there are many businesses that are not benefiting from it. So if you develop your skills development plan properly, then it will give you an advantage where you employ people using the, the grants or the internship or learnerships. Then you'll be able, you'll be using other people's money to run your business. So you need to make sure that you have a skills, uh, a skills plan in place so that you can take advantage of the opportunities that this space of skills development provide for, for your institution. But you must have a conducive environment for, for you to develop the skills, for you to attract talent, for you to keep talent. And it comes ultimately to compliance with, your, with our labor law, making sure that you have a proper 
processes and procedure, more especially code of conduct, the disciplinary processes. But even when the new employees come in, make sure that they are properly um, orientated in terms of uh, do orientation for them, should they understand the labor law, the requirements, technical requirements, uh, compliance with the legislations and all that. So you need to treat your employees according to in compliance with the law. That's very, very important. And that will go a long way. And then it will make you be able to keep talented employees. And if, because if you don't keep employees, you'll keep on losing that knowledge. That knowledge will keep on leaking. So you'll end up being in the, your business for a long time. Because they will, you will not be able to keep people with the experience. And if you're not keeping people with the experience, that means you are required or you'll be expected to do the job. So you'll end up being in the business, not managing your business, but your business managing you. So you'll be in business if you don't have systems in place and you don't have proper skills development plans so that people can take over from you and you can just be, uh, give maybe what do you call it, over, oversight in terms of the operations, but not being operationally involved. But for you to get there, you need to be able to develop your skills within organization. You identify the gaps, you identify the required skills, then you develop the what's, what's missing so that you, you work on those weaknesses that you might have. And that is your road to success. That is that on skills development. Now, our next lesson will be on... A stakeholder management. Thanks.